Good evening, folks. I hope you're excited for today, because I know I am. For those who are unaware, I'm the resident ooky spooky girly Alexa, joined today by... Oh, the casual crypt keeper, Taylor. You already knew that. <laughs> I've got something for you today. Do you believe we're alone in this world, or do you think there's something else out there waiting for us? <laughs> oh, if there's anything I've learned in this lifetime, it's that we definitely are not alone. I know way too much about demonic spirits, ghosties, and aliens for that kind of silly talk. There's definitely something among us. All we need is the proof, and hopefully these five freaky spirits caught on camera are enough to sway you. Hope y'all out there are ready and buckled in. Welcome to the top five scary ghosts caught on camera that terrified investigators. Number five, Brazil. Coming up first on our list of ghost footage that's been freaking out the pros and spooking the amateurs alike is this bizarre clip captured and uploaded to the internet by one Mr. Miracle BR. Thank you, Mr. Miracle. Mr. Miracle shared this and we're glad they did, even if it does have us questioning the nature of our reality ever so slightly. The footage appears to be a body camera footage of a police raid in Brazil, where a group of plain clothed officers are ready to kick down doors to deal with whatever's hiding inside. Of course, they might just be the wrong emergency department to call, as it seems like the Ghostbusters might have been a lot more appropriate. Take a look now. When they kick in that door, either they used a little bit too much force, or there's something in there they're not going to be able to put handcuffs on. The door keeps banging, swinging rapidly and violently back and forth in place. Whatever's going on with this one door seems to be present on all the doors in this warehouse as every door they pass through starts swinging violently as if it's got a mind of their own, leading to the men getting understandably jumpy. You know, the academy doesn't teach you how to deal with ghosts. They start looking over their shoulders over and over, and the video cuts pretty short when the men start to dart down the hall running away in a flurry. Running away from what, I wonder. Now this clip alone is already pretty unsettling. Imagine even with you and your squad, well trained, heavily armed, I still think seeing something you can't explain would have me on edge in a building that already looks pretty creepy. The creepiest part though is apparently this happens to cops more than we know. When the clip was posted, someone on Reddit responded with their own experience in the service. And they wrote, I've cleared some creepy buildings as a cop. The most unrealistic thing about this video is that they kept going. I remember I remember clearing this abandoned plantation house that still had an alarm hooked up with my partner. As we cleared each room, we left the doors open so we knew where we were cleared. Turned around after the last door and all the doors were shut. Noped on out of there. Makes a lot of sense. I would probably do the same. And if you're looking for way more videos about ghosts, goblins, ghouls, and basically everything freaky above the sun and below it, Top 5 Scary is the place to be. Hit that subscribe button, please tickle that little bell if you wouldn't mind. But do that after this video, because we've got way more ghost sightings coming up for you right now. Coming in at number four, back in the late 1930s, on an especially dark evening, a nun was driving a school bus filled with children home after a field trip. They were heading down Shane Road, but when approaching the railroad crossing, the bus abruptly stalled out on the tracks. Most of the students were sleeping, so the nun was quietly attempting to start the engine back up, when a train emerged, seemingly out of nowhere, as its headlamp was uh, burned out. Something that probably, hopefully, wouldn't happen anymore. It was too late to evacuate the children, as the train was moving way too fast. The nun, desperately and frantically, turned the key, making one last attempt to restart the bus, just as the train smashed through the bus, cutting it in half. The nun was thrown through the windshield, but miraculously survived. The uh, rest of the folks on the bus weren't as fortunate and passed from the event. A few weeks later, the nun, guilt-ridden and heartbroken, returned to the site of the accident, filled with guilt and wanted to end her life. She parked her car on the tracks and sat there, waiting for the next train to come along. Later, when a train came into sight, speeding down towards her. In the same way as that tragic night, the nun began to hear some familiar voices. Then, her car began to move forward as if it was being pushed from behind, rolling to safety just as the train passed by. In disbelief, the nun got out of her car and began looking around, expecting to find some sort of good Samaritan, but didn't see a single person. She looked back at her car and noticed child-sized handprints on the back of her trunk and realized that the ghosts of her students had saved her life. The nun was then blessed with a new purpose in life, and she opened a school for orphans, teaching there for the rest of her days. It is said that to this day, if anyone parks their car on or near the railroad tracks at Shane Road, ghostly children will push the vehicle to safety, as they are determined to make sure that no one meets the same gruesome fate that they suffered. Many locals have made claims that say that you can hear the rumbling sounds of a train nearing, the steam whistle howling, and the screeching of wheels as if the train is grinding to a halt. But nothing is there at all, except for the haunting chill of the night. One of the children from this accident is more, shall I say, social than the others, and sometimes tries 
tries to find her way home. Not long after these initial incidents, a woman was driving down Shane Road late one night, and as she approached the railroad crossing, she saw a little girl standing all alone on the side of the road, holding a teddy bear. Now this woman immediately stopped, pulled over, and offered the girl a ride home. Once they arrived at the girl's house, the child was hesitant to leave the vehicle and to head inside. The woman assumed that the girl must have run away from home after a fight with her parents and offered to head to the house first to reassure the family. When the woman got out of the car, she looked back to give the child a reassuring smile, but the girl had completely vanished. She quickly reopened her car door, but no one was there. However, the seatbelt was still fastened. The photo evidence we have from this tale shows the little girl waiting by the tracks, just wanting to get home. Our next weird clip for you is going to be this footage that was uploaded to the Ghosts subreddit. It's got investigators talking and viewers pausing to try and understand just what's going on. And a shout out to the Ghosts subreddit. Thanks for doing most of the heavy lifting on my job. Now you might think that ghosts and spirits only come out to play at night, but when the weather's nice, even the ghosts and ghouls and all things malevolent come out to soak up some rays. Let's give that clip a quick watch. Did you see it? Kind of hard not to. The white specter rushing by the side of the house. The user posted this with the caption, Coworker caught this outside of his house and we're speechless. And it's easy to see why. What is it that's been caught on camera sprinting by that house? Now there's definitely something mysterious here. I get the same vibe off this mysterious entity that I do like the Fresno Nightcrawlers to shout out one of my favorite cryptids and unknown paranormal mysteries. I can't explain what's happening and I know there's probably a reasonable scientific explanation but I'm not finding it right now. Now not everyone is as convinced as me. I'm very easily swayed. Some commenters had suggested that perhaps this could be a small animal like a monkey running by really fast or a parrot flying by really, really fast. You'll have to let us know down below in the comments whether or not you think this was proof of a spectral entity caught on security or if this is just a funny little creature monkeying around. For what it's worth, and I think we should take this seriously, I think a monkey could be a ghost. As far as I know, monkeys can become ghosts. I've never seen someone disprove this. I've never seen someone prove this either, but this might be that proof we need. In second place, we have Johnny Johnson. While Toys R Us may no longer exist as a physical store in the United States, I think, I'd like to travel back to the 70s when it did. Located in Sunnyvale, California, no, 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 not Sunnydale, no Hellmouth here, I don't think, Toys R Us decided to build a store over the property of a former ranch. Honestly, pretty normal sounding so far, right? Staff and customers alike began to report multiple incidents of what they believed to be a haunting, ranging from hearing their names whispered to them or feeling cold breezes and seeing objects moving around on their own. The woman's bathroom, in particular, seemed especially spooky because the sink's faucet taps would turn on by themselves. Oh, and um, some female employees said they experienced what felt like some invisible being playing with their hair, which... Mm. In 1978, psychic Sylvia Brown held a seance there for the first time, determined to identify the entity. The ghost haunting the store allegedly revealed himself as Johnson. Johnson's ghost told Brown that he was a preacher and a ranch hand in the 1880s on what was then the Murphy family farm. He spoke with a mild Swedish accent, and his first name was either John, Jan, or Johan. 10 out of the 16 people assembled there for the seance said they heard a high buzzing noise when Sylvia was supposedly listening to the ghost. The ghost told her that he had been in love with Murphy's daughter Elizabeth, who ran off with an East Coast lawyer. Old news clippings say that Johnson accidentally hacked his leg with an axe while carelessly chopping down trees and um, met his end from the injuries. Sylvia repeatedly went back to the Toys R Us to communicate with Johnny, who she called the most stubborn, ornery, argumentative ghost she'd ever met in her book, stating that she had tried many times to explain to him that his lifetime as Johnny Johnson had ended. Apparently Johnny got so frustrated about being told that he had passed that he gave her the ultimatum that if she ever brought it up again, he would go silent. Sylvia let the matter drop since she and the ghost supposedly had a quasi friendship where they would chat about the annoying and noisy kids who frequented the store. A 2007 piece on Snopes, which if you're unaware of, is a pretty legitimate fact checking site, featured a woman named O'Brien who had worked at the store for over 18 years stocking shelves, claiming that she didn't believe in ghosts, but when you feel a breeze behind you or someone calls your name and there's nobody there. Funny things happen that she just couldn't rationally explain. The report talked about dolls and toy trucks leaping off the shelves, balls bouncing down the aisles, and children's books falling off the racks. Baby swings would move on their own. The folks at Toys R Us say they've tried to explain it logically, but they've got nothing. Johnny was captured on camera in 1978, casually leaning against the shelves while the group that was there for the seance is shown sitting. Now that the store is no longer a Toys R Us, it has housed a spirit Halloween, which feels fitting for some weird 
weird reason. Number one, the Arizona truck ghost. You ask any man of the road, ask them if they've ever seen anything strange up there and they'll tell you everything. And this next clip is just more fuel for that fire. William Church is a truck driver who was driving down Arizona State Route 87 on March 11th and he saw something he couldn't explain. And this time, it wasn't just the heebie-jeebies from one too many coffees and a Slim Jim for breakfast. He spotted something spectral on the road that was recorded by his dash cam. And he thinks this translucent figure was something not of this world. You can see the lines through the legs making a figure, Church told Fox News. Now there are some locals who believe that the highway itself is haunted. It was first built in 1927 and stretching across approximately 273 miles, there's a good bit of tragic history on Route 87. It's been described as one of Arizona's most treacherous roads and as such, countless fatal car accidents have occurred on this particular stretch of land. Could it be that because of this, there's spirits still trapped on the long, lonely road, wandering around looking for a home they'll never be able to return to? After Church's video was uploaded and went a bit viral, viewers reported that they'd seen a lot of supernatural activity around Arizona's highways. If I'm ever traveling through Arizona, I think I will take a boat, perhaps. One of Arizona's many, many plentiful boats for its vast and teeming rivers and lakes. That's what everybody knows about Arizona. It's a really wet state, right? Really wet state. And that brings us to the end of today's list and a reminder to charge the batteries of my camera before my own next ghost hunting expedition. Hey Taylor, wanna join? Oh, I don't know about ghost hunting. Doctor says I can't get any more ectoplasm on me until the burns from last time heal up. So, <laughs> I might just watch the clips. Okay, all right, I promise to send you all of the footage. Oh, and if I catch a glimpse of anything good, I'll be sure to report back to all of y'all out there watching. And that's about all she wrote for this one, my friends. You creep on creeping on now, and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Don't forget to like, comment, and hit the bell for more from us here at Top 5 Scary Videos.